Yesterday, Tuesday, May 24th, 2022, an 18-year-old South Texas man shot his grandmother, drove to an elementary school, barricaded himself in a classroom, and murdered 19 small children and two adults before he was eventually shot and killed by authorities. I'll be honest, uh, I don't have what I think of as a unique take on all of this. Um, which is normally standard for me to do a video about something. But I think it's important that everyone with any kind of platform agitates for change in whatever way that they can. So I'm making this video, um, but I can really only bear to list facts. So here they are. In 2021, Texas legislators passed a law lowering the age that a person can buy a gun from 21 to 18. The killer bought two AR-15 rifles the day or the day after he turned 18. The fact that he waited to be able to legally purchase his guns suggests that had Texas not loosened that law, this tragedy probably would not have happened, at least not for another three years. 97% of mass shootings in the United States are committed by men. In 68.2% of mass shootings, the perpetrator either killed at least one partner or family member or had a history of domestic violence. Of course, this killer was a man who shot his grandmother before going to the school. The grandmother's condition is unknown as of this recording. Firearms are now officially the leading cause of death for children in the United States, passing car accidents. 25% of mass shooting victims are children and teenagers. Only 16% of mass shootings involve an assault rifle, but those shootings make up 25% of all mass shooting deaths and 76% of all injuries. There are six times as many people shot when an assault rifle is involved compared to a handgun. In 1996, an Australian man went on a shooting rampage that killed 35 people. The Australian government immediately moved to enact strict gun control laws. They had broad popular support, but they ran into sudden opposition from a group called the League of Rights, which had grown very quickly despite no obvious means of support. It turns out that America's National Rifle Association and the Christian Coalition were secretly funding them. So the politicians leaked this information to the press and had the group rightfully branded as extremists who were bent on facilitating the continued senseless murder of innocent people. That and a lot of hard work paid off. Uh, they drove the NRA out of Australia, and they passed legislation restricting the private ownership of semi-automatic rifles, semi-automatic shotguns, and pump-action shotguns. They instituted mandatory background checks for all firearms, and they outlined how weapons should be kept and stored securely. That was the last mass shooting in Australia, for the next 20 years. There has only been one since then in the past 30 years, a shooting in Darwin by a man who had stolen a pump action shotgun. They believe he stole it way back in 1997. Australia is not America, though it is one of the few countries that is very similar in terms of language, culture, size, political system. Australia all but stopped mass shootings, and we can too. The organization Every Town for Gun Safety offers dozens of science-based solutions to gun violence. These solutions include a lot that would have prevented this most recent shooting, passing a federal concealed carry law that would stop states like Texas from allowing anyone to carry a gun in most public places without a license, prohibiting assault weapons, prohibiting high-capacity magazines, mandatory gun safety training. Currently, only 39% of legal gun owners have any kind of safety training because states like Texas do not require it. Institute threat assessment programs in schools to identify high-risk students, since 100% of mass shootings are committed by uh current or former students of the school. And in 77% of those cases, at least one peer knew what the shooter was going to do. These are all common sense laws that our representatives could pass, but they choose not to. Uh, the mass murder at Columbine 
occurred uh, over 20 years ago, 1999. Sandy Hook was in 2012. The Stoneman Douglas murders was 2018. All of these very high profile mass murders of children in schools occurred while many of our current congressional leadership were in Congress. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is 82 years old and has been in office since 1987. The second most powerful Democrat in Congress is Steny Hoyer, also 82 years old, and he was first elected in 1981 when I was one year old. Jim Clyburn is 81 years old, and he has been in office since 1993. He's the majority whip for the Democrats. Only Steny Hoyer barely hits the top 10 for the longest serving representatives. Don Young has been in Congress for 48 years. Patrick Leahy and Chuck Grassley, uh, who, by the way, has accepted a quarter of a million dollars from the NRA. They've been in Congress for 47 years. Ed Markey, 45 years. Richard Shelby, who has also accepted a quarter of a million dollars from the NRA, has been in uh, office for 43 years. Ron Wyden and Chuck Schumer and Hal Rogers and Chris Smith, 41 years in Congress. The National Rifle Association spends millions of dollars lobbying our government every year. 19 current or recent Republican congressional representatives have taken more than millions of dollars from the NRA. Mitt Romney, who says he is overwhelmed with grief at this latest shooting, has taken more than $13 million from the NRA. The NRA's goal is to do away with gun control in the United States, just as they tried to do in Australia, meaning that more of these mass shootings will happen. We have to do something. Um, it's not enough to vote blue. Obviously, we need to vote for progressives who will institute term limits to get these fucking dinosaurs out of office because they have spent 40 years doing nothing. We need stricter controls on lobbying efforts by extremist organizations like the NRA. Terrorists should not be able to buy and sell our congressional representatives. Democrats need to put up a vote for a bill, call it the anti-murdered children bill, make the Republicans go on the public record to say that they would rather have NRA money than living school children. Get rid of the filibuster and pass strict gun control over their objections and the objections of the minority of Americans who choose guns over human lives. I don't care if you like your AR-15. Find a new fucking hobby. Learn to knit. Oh, and if you think that this is a mental health issue, not a gun issue, that's fine. Let's also pass universal basic health care with free mental health screenings for all. Raise the minimum wage and invest more in our parks and libraries and schools and community centers instead of buying new tanks for the local police force. I'm so glad that we both agree that those things are all necessary. So... That's it. It's disgusting. I'm tired. That's the end of the video.